Okay, I've been in Prague for two months now, and it's just been a, a fabulous experience for me. Uh, first of all, the city itself, when I came, it's my first time I've ever been to Prague, and the city is just stunning, and I can walk and get lost, and uh, there's no end of beautiful sights, which for a writer is um, extremely inspiring. Uh, I've also found that the people I've met have been extremely engaging, and, and um, it's just been wonderful to meet them, and that's added also to my experience. To have a, um, a big apartment, you know, in, in the center of Prague and to have basically the whole day with none of my belongings for home besides clothes, that gives me basically 16 hours a day at least with full focus on my writing. And I found that I've never been able to write quite as much as I've been able to write here and with that kind of quality and concentration. And that's been an experience for me because I didn't really know. It was my first residency ever, so I didn't know how that would work. But I find even sometimes when I have um, lots of emails from other people, um, you know, having to do professional reasons, that could take a couple hours time. And normally it might have really eaten into my day. I have still the whole day with the quiet and I can still after have a full day of work, go for a walk, come back with fresh eyes and, and work some more. I can work the weekend and this between walking and working and walking and working, it just had a fabulous um, outcome, I feel. I don't think I've ever written something at this early stage and I've read it and I already find, okay, this is a lot of it is, is already of a high level than it usually would be at this stage. And you are picking quite a serious themes in your books and you are connecting them in, with the personal stories. Can you tell, tell us more something, how you are picking the themes and how you work with them? So I've chosen um, my project for Prague was a, quite an ambitious novel because it's a novel that has four generations, uh, which is uh, a bit of my personal experience with family, you know, to have many generations and contact from great grandparents to grandparents and, you know, parents, children. But the, the reason I wanted to write this is because I was very inspired from the, well, first from how much the world's changed, you know, even from my mother's time in South Italy to the way we live today. Uh, my mother who used to, um, the only transportation would have been a mule. The, um, she had no running water in South Italy. They had to go to the well, you know, and now we're in an era of artificial intelligence. We're in an era of, you know, phone and internet, mobile phone. Um, so I wanted to show the change of history through the generations, but more importantly, I wanted to explore a major problem today is how, because we're in a more strained world and there's so politically within families, there's differing views. The whole idea had actually started with the Ukraine and Russia with the realization that many people had families and part of their families were Ukrainian and part of the family was Russian. And this was a huge conflict. When I explored, I saw that even in the Trump era, you were starting to have politics that were um, uh, very heated and, and brought people and families apart because you had people who were pro-Trump, people who were against Trump. And I'm seeing this tendency more and more in Europe and other parts of the world. So I wanted to treat um, war, but on a domestic level within a family and really explore how this happens, how that breaks uh, family members apart, um, is there any way to heal from such a, such a chasm? And uh, yeah, so it's a very serious topic, um, but I feel it's an important topic, so I, I, it was something I wanted to take on. And your latest published book, In Ember's Wake, mm. uh, became a bestseller, and you are now working on the screenplay for the movie. Can you tell us something about the topic from the book and what is your approach to filming? Mm -hmm. So my novel that's, um, that's come out in New Zealand recently, and it's, it's, um, it was a bestseller for several months, and then it came out in Australia, and then now it's coming out, you know, um, little by little in 11 different languages. The translations are underway. I think it's resonating with people from different parts of the world because the theme takes place um, during the Rainbow Warrior bombing. Uh, which happened because the Rainbow Warrior, they, they were protesting against the nuclear testing in the Pacific. So it was basically the whole Cold War period, 
uh, and you had the French testing, but not just the French, the Americans too, and, and the Soviet Union at the time, they were doing their own nuclear bombs, um, you know, in, in parts like uh, Kazakhstan. And so it was this nuclear race, but there, there were a lot of people who were um, greatly affected with radiation sickness, and this was in the Pacific Islands. So I really wanted to treat this era and the people who were fighting against that, and then the, the way the, um, the French government at the time had uh, decided to blow it up, you know, secretly, and then they were caught. And so it's, it's actually a, a love story that takes part, but the Rainbow Warrior and all the environmental issues are in the background of the story. And so um, when I was in Los Angeles, when it was um, time for Jojo Rabbit coming out, I had different people coming to me and wanting to know what I was doing. And I had some offers to make it into a film. So I wrote the screenplay with this one. Um, Taika Waititi had written the screenplay for Jojo Rabbit entirely, but this one I did. And um, yeah, so it's just been very, very interesting and uh, actually very exciting to see the process, you know, little by little, step by step, um, that happens with a collective art form like film. And we know about you that you are playing the violin. Uh, <laughs> how do you approach to the film or music in the film? And what role does music play in your life? Okay, so I do play the violin and, well, I used to play in orchestra right up until um, COVID times. When COVID came, then I, I and many people stopped playing in orchestra, um, which I do miss. I think when I would play music, it would help wash away my whole day of work. So I would have all the writing I did, but then it would make me almost forget it so that when I discovered it in the morning it's almost discovering it for the first time because as a writer you have to have a bit of amnesia and you have to go from writer to the next day to actually be a reader and also a very harsh critic and look what you've done and you know criticize it so music helped me helped me a lot that way I also find it's a beautiful way to socialize with people because it's almost a microcosmos where everyone has their part to play and everyone's important and everyone contributes but somehow you learn to play in harmony and you have to listen to each other and come together so um, it's very inspiring the, the music in films always um, inspires me a lot and though i like a lot classical music or baroque music uh, i do find um, the many types of music in film very powerful. Um, Ennio Morricone, uh, he, he was just um, amazing, the kind of music he did. So I find music can, it, it can directly affect the emotions. It's almost the language of emotions. When you write, you have to use a lot of words and you have to use thought and from thought you reach into emotion. But music seems to somehow just grab hold of you directly with the emotions and you, with no words. It's almost abstract phases, so it's, it's something magical, I think. Yesterday you have met an audience, the Czech audience, in the municipal library. What are your impressions from the encounter? Generally, how do you feel about the readers? So, um, last night at the Prague Municipal Library I, I met Czech readers, and I met them at the Prague University and at the Prague Film School, and I found that the Czech readers are very creative people and very literary people who ask the right questions and who engage very much with stories. So I find the, the audience here um, just, just wonderful. One of the reasons I feel that this residency is so important and supporting uh, writers is that I feel that writers have a role to play in many of the ways people think. The, um, when you see, for example, a film, a film is you experience almost like a dream. So you see the film, you see the images, it's very powerful, you have the music. A book, you actually experience it very differently because a book takes you a long time to read. It can stay with you, you know, 15 hours, sometimes a month. I find that there's no more intimate art form than a book in the fact that you can actually go right inside a character and you can live and you can yourself feel like your character, you know, the character in the book. And then you come to care about that character and what happens in their own world, in their own culture, at 
whatever their age is, as if it were you. And because of that, you learn a lot of empathy and caring for other people when you read books. You, you develop a kind of understanding that you don't have because you can actually go right into the brain. You can feel all the emotions. If someone's back hurts or if their feet hurt, you feel it in the book. So it's, it has something through words. Nonetheless, that has something penetrate other human beings so deeply that I strongly believe books are what bring us closer to each other as humans, you know, in the, the crazy human experience. And that's why I think the books more than ever are important and everything that supports books and writing um, so everything doesn't become entirely just, you know, screen-based is, is essential in our day. Thank you very much for staying with us and we wish you all the best. Yeah, and de, de cui, <laughs> how do you pronounce this properly one time? De cui. De cui. Te and uh, thank you very much too for having me. <laughs>